ये खूब देख ले उसको उनको बताया कि क्या होता है कि हम लोग को तुमने मारा तो हम तुमको क्या प्रतिगा दे सकते हैं In 2007, a reporter went undercover in Gujarat to investigate what had happened during the violence. Posing as a Hindu extremist, he secretly filmed one of the killers boasting about the role he had played. Babu Bajrangi was accused of leading a mob that killed around a hundred people. Who should not be left? Should not be left. I am saying this today. कुछ भी हो लेडीज हो बच्चे हो कुछ भी हो काटने से हो कुछ मारो काटो जला ना कैसा तो, लगता है जब है? कैसा मजा आता है ना सब उसको मार के आए मार के आके घर पे सो गए मिस्टर बजरंगी मेड एन एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी क्लेम अबाउट नरेंद्र मोदी ही सेड दैट व्हेन ही वाज अरेस्टेड फॉर मर्डर सेवरल मंथ्स आफ्टर द मैसेकर मिस्टर मोदी हेल्प्ड हिम गेट बेल बाय चेंजिंग द जज फिर हम फिर नरेंद्र भी हमारे को संदेशा भेजा कह दो मैं भी सेटिंग करता हूँ अभी टाइम निकल गया है फिर उन्होंने जज को भेजा जज ने फाइल ले कुछ नहीं बोले जा Mr Bajrangi later claimed he was reading from a script given to him by the reporter though a judge ruled the veracity of the sting was not in dispute In 2012 Mr Bajrangi was jailed for murder and he wasn't the only one who made damaging claims about Mr Modi Harish Bhatt a local BJP politician said he was at a political meeting addressed by Mr Modi Shortly after the train burning. जब जिस दिन गुजरा हो उस बार सर नरेंद्र भाई के क्या प्रतिक्रिया रही? उनका फेवर एबल लेकिन हम ये जो कि कोई स्टेटमेंट हम नहीं कर सकते हैं। जो उन्होंने किया है ना वो शायद किसी को किसी मुख्यमंत्री ने नहीं किया होगा। मैं कहीं इसको कोर्ट नहीं करूंगा। मैं वैसे भी आपको कोर्ट नहीं करूंगा कहीं कितने किताब में तो उन्होंने जो तीन दिन का मोहलत दिया था जो भी करना चाहो कर लो तीन दिन के बाद में बंद कर दूंगा ये उन्होंने खुलेआम कहा था Mr. Bhatt later said he told the reporter an imaginary story. Mr. Modi has said allegations against him in the recordings are false and incorrect. You often find that activists at the lower level make claims which are. in hindsight quite preposterous they exaggerate their own importance but pressure was now building for a new investigation into the violence by the beginning of 2011 narendra modi had run gujarat for nearly a decade Despite the controversies, some were now tipping him for an even bigger job, India's next prime minister. Modi started to think about national politics very early on, projecting himself as a national leader. I am a Bharat ka santan ho, I am Bharat ki pratishtha aur gaurav se juda hua insan ho. It was already clear that he was headed on a course which would lead him to the national stage. But Mr. Modi had a problem. India's Supreme Court had ordered a wide-ranging investigation into the Gujarat violence. A special investigation team, or SIT, was examining the Daud family murders and allegations made by Ishan Jaffrey's widow that Mr. Modi was part of a criminal conspiracy. that led to the disorder and killings across the state Modi seems to be unstoppable but the ghosts of the past don't leave him alone grilled for 9 hours on the case in 2010 the stain on his image remains the mandate was to look into the possibility that there was a criminal conspiracy by the government led by narendra modi But the criminal conspiracy is a particular term in law which requires a very strong standard of evidence for the first time in the history of independent india a sitting chief minister narendra modi has been questioned on the role of his government in mass murders in connection with the post godra riots in gujarat 
I think Mr. Modi definitely was very worried. His special investigation team was definitely a very serious threat to Mr. Modi's political career. An important witness was the former head of police intelligence in Gujarat, R. B. Srikumar, who'd made a string of claims about police and government failures. He claimed that on the night of the Godhra train burning, Mr. Modi instructed officials to allow Hindus to give vent to their anger. He claimed Gujarat's police chief had told him this, though the chief denied it. Without Sri Kumar, the case against the Narendra Modi government would be much weaker simply because there would have been no information from inside the government which would tell you what was happening. In that sense, he was a central figure in this investigation. Another senior police officer, Sanjeev Bhatt, gave evidence. The ghost of the Godra riots back to haunt Narendra Modi. This time, it's senior police officer Sanjeev Bhatt who alleges that Modi was complicit in the Godra riots. In an affidavit filed in the Supreme Court, Bhatt says that he was present at the crucial law and order meeting chaired by Modi. I know my truth. I have stated my truth. And I have said there are no in an affidavit submitted to the highest court of the land. When he started opposing before the SIT, my father stated that the control room contacted him saying that an unofficial meeting has been called at the chief minister's residence and that his presence was required. He said that Narendra Modi ended up saying that the emotions were running very high in the Hindus and it was imperative that the Hindus be allowed to vent their anger. He said that Narendra Modi had directed the police force to step down, look the other way. Mr. Modi and other officials at the meeting said Mr. Bhatt did not attend. But an independent advisor to the Supreme Court said there was enough evidence to consider prosecuting Mr. Modi. This is a prominent legal person who has reached his own conclusions about what is there. And I think some of those conclusions needed to be taken note of. In major relief for Narendra Modi, the Supreme Court-appointed riots panel has found no evidence against the Gujarat chief minister. The complainant, Zakia Jafri, had accused Modi of ordering officials to give rioters a free hand. The only complaint that named him. After three years, the SIT ruled that Mr. Modi would face no charges. It said R.B. Srikumar's account was hearsay and Sanjeev Bhatt's account could not be relied on. It said claims about the instructions Mr. Modi had given were not established. So what next for Modi? Legal experts say he has not got a clean shit in the riots. Just that there is no evidence, but it could strengthen. The ruling did not stop the debate over what had happened. The special investigation team could not succeed for many, many different reasons. The investigation team had to rely somewhat on the Gujarat police. Much of the investigation on the ground is done by police officers. And among the people who stand indicted are the Gujarat police force itself. The SIT report is really very superficial. It doesn't explain how this pogrom could take place. So, of course, it underestimates, I mean, it minimizes the role of the top leaders, the chain of command. To establish criminal conspiracy in law is often very difficult. Just because they have arrived at the conclusion there was no criminal conspiracy is not the same as saying the conduct is above question, that there were not serious lapses. That in no way takes away all the important questions that still stand on the 2002 violence. Yes, there were some people who said they were at a particular meeting when others said they were not. Agenda was to destroy Narendra Modi politically. The agenda was explicitly political. I don't think they were, they were concerned about Muslim victims. And these included a section of the media. These included journalists. These included NGOs. I think ultimately at the end of the day, the SIT findings didn't implicate Mr. Modi. The SIT gave a clean chit to Narendra Modi. We have to have faith on our institution and we have to put a full stop on something and we have to move forward. The verdict cleared the way for Mr. Modi to run for prime minister. 
the travel bans were lifted. Diplomatic relations with the West were restored. I don't think that I had any doubt that Mr. Modi is going to be the next Prime Minister. Narendra Modi, India's next Prime Minister, riding into Delhi in triumph. After he won an election landslide with his promise that good days are coming for India. बड़ी खबर आ रही है इस वक्त गुजरात के पूर्व आईपीएस अफसर संजीव भट्ट को जामनगर की अदालत ने उम्र कैद की सजा सुनाई है संजीव भट्ट वॉज जेल फॉर लाइफ इन 2019 ओवर अ डेथ इन कस्टडी केस डेटिंग बैक 30 इयर्स हिज फैमिली इंसिस्ट सी इज इनोसेंट एंड मेनी से हिज ट्रायल वॉज अनफेयर The government will try to do whatever they can to ensure that my father's voice is not heard. He is the sole surviving witness who can tie Narendra Modi to the carnage of 